General John J. Pershing arrives in France to command the two and a half million men in the American Expeditionary Force. Lafayette, here they come. First detachment of America's doughboys disembarked somewhere in France as America moves to make the world safe for democracy. Actual shots of Pershing's men taken on the field of action. This was the army Pershing built from hundreds of thousands of raw recruits, carrying out the daring doctrine of open warfare, which was the American strategy. Mobile units, which vindicated Pershing's judgment by smashing the German salient at Saint Michel in September 1917, met with tremendous objection from British French leaders. But they were to eventually blast the enemy out of the Argonne, driving forward through almost impossible terrain. Fresh career as a leader of men began when he entered West Point at the age of 20. Master of troop formations and artillery barrage strategy, his first love was the cavalry, and it was on horseback that he fought the Apache and Dakota Indians. But this war is different. The big guns you are seeing now pour into enemy held positions with Pershing right with them at the front, an inspiration to his men. As American troops recaptured French town after town, Pershing's hour of triumph was near, for the German army was giving up. Then came November 1918 and the armistice. In France, Pershing greets President Wilson. Greatest were the general's previous glories, glories such as the Philippines, where Theodore Roosevelt honored his accomplishments by raising his rank from captain to brigadier general, none eclipsed this greatest of all his personal triumphs. However, the armistice for which fought was the one disappointment of World War I to him. For in 1941, when he offered his services after Pearl Harbor, he declared, if we had gone on to Berlin in 1918, we would not be going back now. But back to Paris, with Pershing leading the victory parade, just prior to returning to accept America's homage. It's September 1919 as the Leviathan comes into New York Harbor, and General Pershing on board is given a tremendous ovation. The war is over, and a city pays homage to the man who led the victory. Congress is to confer on him a supreme honor after this reception by Al Smith and Mayor John F. Hyland. It is to make him, by special act, General of the Armies, only man since George Washington to bear that title. Here, Washington, D.C. duplicates New York's perception with a general on his favorite black horse leading a parade down Pennsylvania Avenue. And then, 29 years later, July 15, 1948, Pershing is dead. The capital of the nation for which he fought so valiantly now sees him born to a last resting place. Pershing retired in 1924 after making thousands of friends in all walks of life. Down Pennsylvania Avenue comes this sorrowful procession. General Omar Bradley, along with Legionnaire representatives, mourns as the last benediction is read, and the mortal remains of a hero are about to be entrusted to the earth in Arlington Cemetery, a spot he himself chose. John J. Pershing is gone, but America's freedom is a lasting eulogy to his memory. <laughs>